What's up YouTube? Welcome back to Aviator Chris. This is the fifth and final episode in the Home Sim Tour series. Today we're going to take a look at the overall construction and total cost involved to build the Home Sim. Stick around. Alright, so let's just jump right into it. This is probably going to be my least favorite one to film because I'm finally sitting down to tally up all the costs of how much the, uh, the Home Sim has cost me here. All things considered, it pretty much cost about what I expected now that I tallied everything up. Uh, with all construction, we start with the foundation, which is this wood platform here. Uh, that is the base for the whole sim. It's basically sitting on top of furniture movers, so I can move the, uh, the home sim around if needed. Uh, it is quite heavy, uh, but it is, it is manageable. From there, we constructed the walls with the studs, uh, which is what the three TVs hang off of, and the cross braces for what the main, uh, I guess, tabletop, uh, if you want to call it that, that the rest of all the real sim gear and, and avionics sit on top of. After the walls were up and the TVs were mounted and we did a, a quick uh, loose fitting uh, to make sure and see how everything lined up and that everything was going to work out, uh, then we did all the paneling and the trim. We finished it off with an oak saddle for the doorway and then uh, I ended up picking up a 5x7 ruggable. I highly recommend them. I have a bunch of those rugs in the house. Um, they're super easy to clean, throw them right in the wash, and uh, they're good as new. The 5x7 size actually worked out to be perfect. That was totally non-intentional, by the way. Um, it is the perfect width and it kind of runs up the back to kind of give it a, a nice look and feel. Now my cable management isn't the greatest, but we'll go ahead and take a look behind the panel and underneath. Um, basically I have one main power switch that when I flip this switch, it powers up all the avionics and powers up the power switch that's underneath uh, mounted along the brace here. Now as I don't have a dedicated home sim PC, I basically made a wiring harness uh, that runs the length. It's about, uh, give or take, a little, just under 30 feet. Uh, of wiring required, um, but I bought a little bit of uh, extra length just in case I move it around and whatnot. Uh, so I have three 50-foot optical HDMI cables to run the three displays, uh, two USB 3.1 extension cables, two 3.5 millimeter audio extension cables, and one Ethernet to run the Raspberry Pi 4, uh, which is running virtual here, which allows me to get uh, a couple extra USB items running uh, over the Ethernet. And the final finishing touch that I just added is the tension shower rod. It was about 10 bucks from Home Depot. Um, and that's what the green screen hooks up to, and I could kind of pull it across, and that's how I get the, uh, the forward-facing uh, green screened uh, in the plane view uh, when I'm doing the live streams on Twitch. All right, and to answer the question that a lot of you have been asking lately, uh, we're going to go over a kind of deep dive on what everything costs me here. Uh, so all the construction materials, including the ruggable rug, uh, they all tallied up to about $1,653.84. I might be missing one or two odd items here, but that pretty much covers the, the ruggable with the pad system, uh, all the wood, the trim, saddle, uh, and all that stuff. I think the only thing that's not included is the shower rod but uh, for the green screen, and that was about 10 bucks, I believe. So now let's take a look at all the sim parts here. Uh, I kind of broke them down by brand, I guess. Um, so starting with the Logitech gear, uh, we have the three flight instrument panels. They're about $169.99 each. That came out to $509.97. Uh, the TPR rudders were $597.43. Uh, the GoFlight stuff, I estimated. I don't remember how much it cost me. I bought the GoFlight panels a good number of years ago now. Um, the closest thing I could find is that they're 90 bucks. That might just be what you can pick them up for now because it looks like GoFlight is out of business. Um, but overall, I think they were actually more expensive, um, but the two of them were about $90 each is, is the best accurate, most up-to-date price that I could find. I don't know what they cost me, uh, you know, when I bought them probably better part of 10, 15 years ago, maybe now. Next category is Desktop Aviator. We have the Cessna Switch Panel at $110.95 and the Cessna Flaps Panel at $75.95. The Real Sim Gear TBM panel, which comes with everything except the yoke, rudder, and throttle, uh, that came out to about five grand. The Brunner CLS MK2 yoke, uh, this is the current uh, conversion rate as of the filming of this video. Uh, it would come out to about nineteen hundred nineteen and seven cents if you were to pick it up today. Uh, we have the Flight Sounds, which is the company that makes the FSX Dual. That's two twenty nine. The Virtual Fly TQ6 Plus throttle quadrant comes out to six thirty seven eighty one. We have the three TCL 55-inch TVs that came out to about $959.97 for all three. And the three mounts uh, were $104.97. I got those off Amazon. So that brings us to about a total cost of all the simulator parts of $10,144.12. 
And just to cover some of the miscellaneous cabling here, we have the three optical HDMI 50 foot cables. Uh, those were 205 26. Uh, the two audio cables were $22 for the two of them, uh, about 11 bucks each. Uh, and the two USB 3.1 extension cables uh, totaled uh, $60.80. And that brings our grand total for the cabling to $288.06. And for the final tally, the total home SIM cost cost me $12,086.02. All right, everyone, so there you have it. The total SIM pit cost and the construction uh, in a nutshell. All in all, would I do it again? Absolutely. Uh, as much fun as real world flying is, my home airport is extremely busy. Sometimes it could take 45 minutes to an hour of Hobbs time just sitting on the ground trying to get into the air. Um, if it's just a quick local flight that I just want to have some fun, uh, maybe just stay sharp with AT uh, ATC, I can just hop in my home sim, jump on Pilot Edge, jump on VATSIM, fly around, and, and almost get that same enjoyment. Um, without having to spend all the extra money and then the time to do the pre-flight and wait and delays and, and things like that. Um, obviously, for going places, there's no replacement for the real thing, and I hop in the plane and, you know, I'll, I'll go to a destination. Um, that obviously can't be replicated here, um, but it is nice if I'm going somewhere new that I can fly that in, in, in one of the home sims here, um, X-Plane uh, 11, 12, Microsoft Flight Simulator, and kind of get familiar with, you know, whatever airspace I might go through or uh, taxi... Uh, diagrams and taxi layout of an airport and things like that. So for that, um, you know, the, the home sim checks all those boxes for me. So that is pretty much the conclusion of the home sim tour series. Um, if there's anything you felt like I missed or didn't cover, uh, let me know in the comments below and I could either reply to you or, you know, maybe it'll be a follow-up video if it's something major that I may have missed here. Also, if you'd like to see the home sim in action, you could uh, find me on twitch.tv forward slash Aviator Chris, where I live stream uh, various flights, whether I'm on an online ATC network like VATSIM or Pilot Edge, or, uh, you know, just cruising around, you know, experimenting and learning a new aircraft. And lastly, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and bell notification for future videos. I plan on releasing new content every Thursday at 3 p.m., whether it be real-world aviation related or flight sim related. Be well and fly safe.